Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia. <laughs> Here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter in law. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How are you doing? I'm living the dream. You look so pretty. Wow, thank you. You, you do, do you look too. really pretty tonight. Thanks. Oh, my God. Oh, it is election night. Girl, don't even talk about that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We should totally talk about election night no. and politics. <laughs> no. By the time anybody hears this, except for the patrons. Yeah. Or watches this, except for the patrons, mm -hmm. we will have a new president in this dumpster fire of a country, oh honey. God. Is there going to be rioting happening Probably. when people are watching this on YouTube? Probably. Is there going to be people out there going ham yeah. when people hear this on the podcast? Probably. Everybody settle down. Yeah, chill out. It's going to be Okay. It's going to be fine. I promise it's going to be okay. Yeah. But you will not catch us talking politics. No. Because that's not what this podcast is for. In fact, no. we must issue you a disclaimer. Please. Hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. Mm -hmm. We have stupid opinions. And Very. that's the best thing about us. Oh, yeah. Is our dumb opinions. 100. And so if you're so sorry. You might want to find yourself another dumpster. But if you're ready to party and listen mm. to some raccoons calling in and sounding off about Cody Brown and company, yeah, welcome to this dumpster. Welcome. And if you are down to party with us, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon. <gasps> Patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party's at. Okay. If you are watching on YouTube, first of all, thank you. Thank the you. comments we get on YouTube are fire. Fire. I mean, obviously, they're way more forensic than we are. Yeah. They have better opinions. Sometimes. Just generally speaking, yeah. typically always. Yeah. <laughs> Except that one person who has a problem with my cup. I know. <laughs> I'm like, I just went to Bucky's. I needed the cup. It's not that deep. But anyway, Chill. the comments are awesome. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because every single thing you do helps us in the algorithm. And thank you in advance. Thank you. Now, I did say it at the top. That we have, I don't know, seven. Seven. <laughs> Tonight we have seven. seven people, seven raccoons who yeah. are mobilized, bitch. Uh, radicalized. They are reactive. <laughs> yeah. They are into some reactive abuse. They are ready yeah. to abuse Cody because Cody is an abuser. Yes, and he deserves it. And he does deserve it. <laughs> and I'm here for it. Yes. And so we have some people who have called in to give us some opinions. And that's all we're going to be doing here. All, actually. What? Actually. There was a newsworthy item. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. We have to bring that up first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They sold <laughs> the McMansion. The McMansion and Flagstaff. Sold, sold. for $1.775 yes. million. Like almost $2 million over asking because apparently whoever purchased this hobby house of horrors... <laughs> Also purchased an additional two acres adjoining this property. Although, did Cody <gasps> own that acreage? I doubt I it. I don't understand. Mm. But now, apparently, they can take that off the books because they sold it for a profit. These assholes are rolling in dough, Beatrice. But they're just going to spend all of that on that ugly-ass mansion in Flagstaff as well. So, um, I don't know. I feel like this is not going to go over well for Cody. I mean, if Christine's Why? suing him for child support and all mm -hmm. of this shit, and he's like responding, I don't know if he's fighting back. And I don't know if that without a crystal ball article was correct about filing to stop the sale of the house or the purchase of the house. Yeah, I don't think she was correct about that. Probably not. I think she um, that was a that was a wrong opinion. And as I said last week, there were some lawyers up on Reddit who were saying, when you actually break down the language, mm -hmm. um, they have the right to go ahead and move their property. So I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like this is going to blow up in their face. Personally. Well, but they made a big profit. I mean, they mm. made a big profit. You would think that they would pay back janelle They're and mary for the amount that they paid into the mcmansion vis-a-vis -vis the down payment and or maybe they could buy out janelle and her property on coyote pass i really want to know how that worked out because of Me course too. in this week's episode we have janelle 
and Cody meeting at Josephine's Bistro <laughs> to hash it out. But yeah. I don't actually know what happened. We know that they paid off the land. But yeah, like, whose money? Of. Did he have to finance it? Who who out there is giving these people financing? I don't understand. On a $2.1 million home, you've got a bank out there financing these creepos? Well, a bank is going to finance anybody that they can, That's not though. true. I mean... You have to have the lending ability. You sure. have to have collateral. You have to have liquidity. Maybe it's in all of the art. I mean, if they have a trust... Of that money, $420,000. Is that just a way to money launder? Girl, yeah. Ugh. People do that all the time. Well, just newsflash. The McMansion has sold. Somebody bought it. Yep. Shockingly. Weird. <laughs> um, And that's all we have now. Let's get to the speak pipes. By the way, if you want to call in and you want to sound off, it's really easy. All you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash reality tv cringe you have up to 90 seconds it's totally free free and we love to hear from you yeah and we will feature you on the pod we will more than likely yes okay all right first message we have is from emily, emily? hey guys emily here from the irish dumpster i just wanted to say i think it's really funny that um people are shocked and surprised by christine and how she's carrying on that's very irish very sorry how she is behaving with David and how surprising it is that Cody and Robin have bought this new house, allegedly. And it's almost like we've been watching this show of people making really good decisions for 19 seasons. It's like people have forgotten who it is we're watching. So is Emily being sarcastic? You have to break it down. She yeah. doesn't actually think that the Browns have no. been making a series of wonderful decisions yeah. for themselves. She's being sarcastic. Like, why are people surprised that Christine's moving so fast and making all these dumb decisions with David with that ugly ring? And you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. You know what well, I mean? Well, I mean, I'm I'm surprised and I'm not. And we've talked to this kind of to death mm -hmm. because like we understand her culture and we understand that in Mormonism, couples move fast anyway, but then we've also talked about how she's 50 and she's just getting yeah. out of this huge relationship and she has all these kids sure. who are witnessing what she's doing. And so yeah. we would expect her to have some decorum, but Emily's right. I'm not surprised yeah. that she doesn't. And I'm also not surprised that these people have been making terrible decisions, which I do think purchasing a $2.1 million dollar ugly house for real is a terrible decision when we are probably one or two seasons away from this whole shit getting canceled bitch facts so yeah i'm, I'm surprised but i'm not surprised mm -hmm. at the same time because yeah this is the show we've been watching for 19 seasons now yeah. these people are dumb but i still get upset of course i still have reaction i'm still gonna rage absolutely of course that'll never change emily never Thanks, Emily. By the way, international raccoons. Absolutely. What the heck? International raccoon of mystery. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> love it. And I love Ireland. I've been a few times. I've never been. We gotta go. I want to go. We should go on one of those ghost tours. Yeah. We could bring a bunch of raccoons. We could go kiss the Blarney I would love Stone, that. which oh, I think people pee on that and stuff. But like <laughs> we could do so many fun things as fat raccoons go. in Ireland. Let's Help go. us to get there, Emily. <laughs> All right, next message we have is from Sarah. And actually, I think she sent two messages oh, okay. in a row. So oh, we'll she's got a lot to say. She's got a lot to say. She's triggered. More than 90 seconds of okay. stuff to say. All right. Hey, guys. After hearing the episode last week, I had to chime in with my opinion on the mothers. I think these women are overpraised. They, of course, deserve some praise, but we can't forget that they sat there for years and watched their children be neglected and then also partially participated in it. Um, especially Christine. She gets under my skin. I just feel like Christine is a pick me and no one's saying that like she is a pick me. The reason why she left was because Cody said that he's no longer attracted to her and never was. She didn't leave because he didn't go to her child surgery. She didn't leave because of all the neglect that she suffered behind him. I feel like if he would have never said that she would have been there. Now she's finally found someone who picked her and is also willing to be on TV. And I think that's important to point out because with him willing to be on TV, she can show the world and also Cody that with all the love and stuff that she's being showered with, that she is deserving of that love. And of course she is, but I just feel like she really wants to show it and stick it to him. 
even the conversation between Cody and Christine, like that sit down where she broke up to him, that was so not Christine's personality to be that calm and collective and clearly articulate her points. I just feel like she had Olivia Pope and Associates on speed dial because she knew that if she came across like that, it was only going to make Cody look worse. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Hmm, hot take. Yeah, why do you think so? Yeah, because, I mean, I feel like a lot of people are praising all the wives, especially Christine. Mm -hmm. Like, on Reddit, people are calling each other the C-word right? for <laughs> being critical of how cringy her and David's relationship is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's a valid reason for Christine to not be okay with being married to somebody who's not attracted to her. Like, it's okay for her to leave because of that. But I feel like Sarah makes a good point of, like, yeah, you didn't leave when he didn't go to isabel's scoliosis surgeries mm -hmm. you didn't leave when he was neglecting your family for years and mm -hmm. not being a father to your children like all of your children have strained relationships with cody now like you're partly to blame for that so mm -hmm. i feel like that's a good point oh yeah and i think that i mean we do mention this quite a lot mm -hmm. the complicit nature of these wives mary janelle and christine i feel bad to call christine a pick me simply because I feel that she was so traumatized in this relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I definitely think she wished and she hoped that Cody would pick her mm -hmm. even just once. I mean, we saw her go to Galveston with that two actual two marriage counselors to try right. and work on her relationship. And even when they're there for the sole purpose of working on their marriage, he's like making a rock formation for the whole family because he can't conceive of a life where it's just him and Christine in a marriage. And right. so I feel really bad for her. But at the same time, she annoys me too. Yep. I also will say that I think she was winding up to leaving Cody when the whole Isabel thing went down. Mm -hmm. I think she was probably listening to Cody, who was the one who was like, yeah, she doesn't need surgery. Let's keep her in the brace. Let's keep her doing these very painful exercises. In that, I think she was complicit with Cody in really injuring Isabel. Mm -hmm. But when Cody didn't show up, to the hospital, to the surgery, to the aftercare, didn't even really come over when they came home. I think that might have been the defining moment that caused Christine to say, I am out. Yeah. But like it should have happened way before that. And For I sure. do agree with Sarah in that regard. I agree 100%. Now here's her second message. Okay. Let's hear it, Sarah. Hey, y'all. It's me again. I'm feeling chatty today, I guess. I wanted to talk about the notion that Cody never loved Christine. I kind of believe it. If you think about their society and how Christine was described to us, we know she comes from a prominent family within the religion. So I definitely believe there was some pressure and also social status for Cody to gain to marry her. I feel like Christine probably saw Cody and she liked him. And we know from that first season how much she gushed over wanting to be the third wife. And so she saw that position was open, liked Cody and probably pushed her family to introduce them to kind of see if the match would work. And I feel like Cody may have felt pressured, A, to say yes because of her family's social status. But B, also he um, he was able to gain social status by marrying into that family and having that family as an in-law. So I don't know. I kind of believe it. And I think knowing how their religion works and that you're probably going to get at least three wives in their religion I feel like he probably just kind of took that one on the chin and they made it work um he made it work I think he probably did pretend and I don't Christine did a very good job as a mother um, and homemaker in the family so it also fit so like I said I kind of believe that what do you guys think what do you think yeah, I think Cody, out of all of the wives, I think Cody probably didn't love Christine, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think he I think he totally loved Janelle. I think he totally loved Mary. Like, I think his bullshit of how he's never loved Mary ever, I'm like, that's so dumb. Yeah, agreed. I feel like he totally loved those two. I think maybe he tried to love Christine because, you know, obligation. But when he does talk about how he married her out of some obligation, he was sad on their wedding day. Mm -hmm. I think that is true. Well, I was watching the episode this week, like the rest of y'all, and um, Cody was talking about, or maybe Christine was talking about 
her marriage, I forget, but they're showing the same old pictures of Christine mm-hmm. in that god awful wedding dress. Oh my god, that some family Terrible. member sewed for her. I feel really bad for her. Yeah. Um, and the picture of her and Cody on their wedding, and he just looks like a man who is struck with fear. Yeah. He looks like a man who's like, Oh shit, what am I doing? But at the same time, how do you not love somebody and or how are you not attracted to somebody? Let's start there. Yeah. And yet you have five children with them. Right. Like your dick's getting hard. Honey. For sure. That's not love, but it is sexual attraction. It is a right. kind of affection. But at the end of the day, I, I think I agree, Sarah. I don't think he ever was like infatuated with Christine yep. or like head over heels and sprung for Christine. But there was that first Christmas when Christine joined the family where he bought all of these Christmas presents for Christine and nothing for Mary. Yeah, see? So I'm. what was that? Maybe just attraction, maybe sexual chemistry. I don't know. But I mean, the nachos and he I said he mean, was repulsed. I mean, it, it just doesn't make sense. But that's par for the course with the Browns because they're constantly contradicting themselves. Of course, especially Cody, because yeah. anything he can do to rewrite history or take off any blame from himself for being a total fucking failure <laughs> of a husband. I mean, you could you've been with this lady for 25 fucking years like you're telling me that entire time you just weren't into her, like not even a little bit? That's a little sus. Well, and he did kind of concede in this episode that there were good times mm-hmm. and we hear Aspen talking about them dancing in the kitchen. Right. So like it wasn't all bad. Right. I don't know. By the way, if you're hearing somebody sneezing in the background, that's my great Dane Sunshine. <laughs> sunshine. She has joined us for this yeah. audio and video. It's a girl party. All right. Who else called Beatrice? All right. Next we have AJ. AJ? Yeah. From the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> hey guys, this is AJ from Oklahoma, and I have been a raccoon in your dumpster since the very beginning. First of all, I want to say that Cody Brown is a boil on the butt of life. I cannot stand the man, but yet for some reason I keep watching because I just can't stop. What I really want to talk about though is did either of you think that? Cody and Mary were being flirty with each other whenever he came over to help her move that furniture on last week's episode because I feel like the energy between them was like super flirtatious especially like there towards the end when they were in the trailer all four of them were in the trailer and he was talking about how you know why is it easy now why is it easy now all of a sudden that we're not together you know, we can be civil towards each other. And I'm like, well, you're going a little bit further. You're you're being flirty. Hmm. hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I would say that maybe Mary, if anybody came off as remotely flirtatious, Mary did with her Cody. Yeah. And her tittering in the driveway mm-hmm. and her laughing and kind of the way that she was acting could be perceived as flirtatious. Although I might... I might probably think that she was just uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and didn't necessarily know what to do or how to approach it. I didn't think that Cody came into that interaction flirtatious at all. Like, if we recall, he just sidesteps Mary. He hugs Rebecca. Is that her name? Or Rachel? Uh, Something, yeah. Something biblical like that. And he says hi to Nate. Nate. (laughs) Nate gets all of his attention and Mary gets dust from him. Yeah. But as they're all hanging out, I do see that more of like a camaraderie is Mm -hmm. developing and they're acting like friends. I wouldn't necessarily say there was chemistry, like some sexual seduction, no honey, way. tingles downstairs uh, happening. No if it was happening, it was happening to Mary. For sure. But not Cody. Agreed. Does it even tingle anymore, Cody? I mean, no. <laughs> not with the help of some Viagra. Need a pill, baby. <laughs> yes, ma'am. No, I feel like if anything, there is still some like lingering, I don't even know what you would call it. Not chemistry, maybe a little bit of a connection because they've been with each other for 30 something years sure. so like there's that you know i don't even know what you call it just like a little bit of an energy from mm-hmm. knowing somebody for that long yeah. maybe that but yeah i agree if anything it came from mary because mary would love to be with cody brown still mm-hmm. to this day which she told nate i know <laughs> she's like i mean i would still try to this day but it's to him he's the one who doesn't want to do it so i guess we can't yeah which is cringe so, for you mary very but, much so i mean yeah, it's it's only coming from her side, not Cody. Yeah, I would agree. 
He didn't want to touch her for no, 10 years. No, with a 10-foot pole Absolutely on that day not. even, no. Never. All right, so next one we have is from an anonymous raccoon. Anonymous? Are they going to abuse me? Okay. Hey, raccoons. I love your podcast. I have been watching Sister Wives since season one, and Cody has been pissing me off for the better part of a decade now. Um, so it's nice to have a place to come and sound off in. But what's been pissing me off the most is Cody and Robin and their talking heads. I feel like in the earlier seasons, a lot of the things that they would say would kind of have, you know, a little bit of follow up. They wouldn't get too involved in the interviews, but they would kind of ask light questions like, what do you think about that? Or what about this? And now in these newer seasons, a lot of what they say, or it seems like everything they say, is unchallenged. There's no follow-up, no other questions asked. And maybe a lot of that is because a lot of this is self-filmed. But even in their talking heads where you, there's a production team, they have like room to say whatever they want without anything being challenged. And I get the sense that they know that. So the things that they're saying are be, like increasingly manipulative. It's so frustrating to watch. Anyway, can't wait for the tell-all. Hopefully we'll get a little bit of something, but we will keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> and I am never going to leave this dumpster, baby. Yeah, thank you. I am 100% in agreement yep. with what was this person's name? Anonymous. This beautiful anonymous raccoon. I'm sick of it. I am too. I'm sick of it, Beatrice. I'm so sick of it. There are, like, oh, was it last week or the week before when I'm like, can somebody just break a fourth wall when Cody or Robin is talking some shit? Like Robin this week, she's like, um, there's this new concept <laughs> that I just got Cody wrapped around my little finger. Like, I don't even know what people would be even Like I'm putting that spells for. on what? him. Okay, then let's do the montage. Mm -hmm. You can do it in post if you're too weak to actually call her on it in the moment because that whole chat and Christmas concept conversation mm -hmm. also stemmed from your controlling nature Robin yep. and so who are we trying to fool and why is production so weak dicked with Cody and Robin unless of course they're friends or unless of course they have some sort of power that we don't know about call these assholes out I it makes know. me crazy it makes me crazy too maybe Robin and Cody threatened to leave the show good go Maybe production's like, no, we need you, though. Like, we need you for the we ratings. We actually don't. I Just mean, refer to them. I agree. Use old footage. But rage bait. I mean, that's huge. I mean, seriously. I know that's, like, so annoying. But are people going to want to watch Mary do her plexus bullshit at her carriage house? And her Christine worthy up? No. Making out with I'd David? I'd like to see Mary date, though. Sure, but she's not right now. I would have loved to see her dating that Amos fellow who she was just who was just grifting and using her for fame. I would have She's loved to see to. that. I doubt we're going to see that on Sister Wives. No. There are many things I'd love to see and I would watch. And then if we could just have them talking about Cody and Robin and how they're declaring bankruptcy and yeah. having to get foreclosed upon That'd in their new great. McMansion, I would love that. I, would love I don't that feel like I need Cody and Robin. I mean, I don't feel like we need them either, but the network probably does. The network is like, yes, keep saying dumb fucking shit. Keep making a fool out of yourself. Please give us this rage bait because people are going to watch anyway. We're watching anyway. Yeah. Other people are watching anyway. It makes me so upset, though. I agree. But... It's like how they keep Angela Deem yes, on the network exactly. with my cow. And I'm exactly. like, why are we platforming abusers it's and racists? I don't understand. Why are we platforming Cody Brown? But the fact is, TLC. it is the second largest show on TLC behind 90 Days. Exacto Mundo. <sighs> Yep. But I mean, it would be so great if they at least, I mean, Agreed. if Cody wants to get up and stalk off out of his talking head, Bye. that would be so dramatic and fantastic. Oh, be so Come awesome. on, poke the bear. Right. It'd be great. I don't know why we won't, but that's the weak dicked production. Yep. That's TLC for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. So mm. the next one we have is from a raccoon on Instagram because she couldn't figure out how to do speak pipe. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I wanted to <laughs> really? feature her. That's yeah. adorable. Okay. Her name is Cynthia. She's been with us for a while. Okay. Girl, I just have to say I am laughing my ass off here. <laughs> oh my God. The comment that he, that Cody busted his way <laughs> in like the Kool-Aid man. That was amazing. Um, yes, the show is horrible, but honestly, it makes me laugh so much when I hear you guys talking about it. It makes my day. I never want it to go away, to be honest with you. Keep it up. 
Love it. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Cynthia. Well, the other thing oh, too. Sorry. <laughs> um, regarding Christine, I wish I could do the speak pipe thing, but I can't follow it. I'm a boomer too. Um, regarding Christine, I was told that when you get divorced, you uh, regress back to the age that you were when you first married. So Christine is po- probably 17, you know, and she really is acting that way. Anyway, just my thought. You guys can share it between yourselves. Love oh, you. That is really interesting. Like I've heard that the moment you take like a dose of drugs is also like a formidable moment in time or like become an addict and or experience abuse Mm. that you regress back to that time and Mm -hmm. and you don't actually continue to mature past that point. I've Mm. never heard that connected to marriage or relationships, but I mean, it it makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. I'm like seeing it in my own personal life with my parents' divorce and everything. I mean, they totally (laughs) went back to when they were 20 years old, when they first got married and it was so annoying and super cringe. So I could totally see Christine just going Mm. back to the 17 year old. I think I even talked about it last week a little bit, like how she's acting like that. Yes. Super immature. And she's going through that phase. Ethel's told me this too. Like there's this therapeutic principle of like nobody skips a stage in life. You just end up going back to it at whatever point, whatever age that you're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like if you grow up in like a repressed, super crazy fundamentalist cult where you don't get to have those like normal, quote unquote, normal experiences, if you end up leaving it, you end up going back to those like age moments, like those pivotal points in your life because- you can't escape it. You just repress it. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I've never heard that, but that makes total sense. Like you're yeah. going to have to deal with it at some point. Exactly. I mean, you can keep tamping it down and tamping it down, but mm-hmm. like the body keeps the score and yes, that shit will continue to rise to the surface until you notice it and deal with it. Exactly. But yeah, I can see it in Christine too, because a totally. lot of people online have been commenting. She's acting like a teenage girl. Yes. A lot of her behaviors seem very immature, but like mm-hmm. maybe that's just when she stopped maturing in that specific way exactly which yeah. makes a lot of sense it's still cringy oh yeah and she's still a 50 year old woman like you know maybe grow up a little bit but i can have some empathy i can understand where she's coming really from. i mean a little bit okay it's still annoying <laughs> okay but i can understand a little bit yeah with that principle in my mind yes me as well yes all right last but not least last speak pipe caller Seven. my god her name is mercedes oh my God. Yeah. I lo- Do you want to ride in my Mercedes, boy? I love oh, that name. I oh, know. God. Hello, Raccoon here from a dumpster in Spain. I wanted to answer the question about whether Robin fakes it. I think we all know the answer to, to that, but um, given Cody's sense that he knows everything and especially knows a woman body body better than she knows herself, I think we know what's going on. Um, however, I just wanted to point out that when he was coaching Robin during her uh, birthing scene, she was doing great, but he was yelling at her stupidly about, you know, like how she should breathe. She's sucking up her own oxygen. And I noticed she rolled her eyes at him and he didn't have a narcissistic uh, injury based on that. And he's so sensitive to any like negative feedback. And so my theory is that she rolls her eyes all the time at him in frustration. We've seen it. I think that, yeah, she thinks that's her O face. And, um, I think that Robin doesn't even have to fake it. She just simply rolls her eyes and Cody assumes he's doing great. And the eye rolling is pleasure. And, Robin, of course, is serving her best customer and getting things in another way uh, and has control of Cody in other ways. So that's my theory. What do you think? (laughs) Savage. (laughs) So her rolling her eyes at Cody Brown is her O-face. face. So he doesn't know that she's actually annoyed with him. He thinks that she's sexually attracted to him (laughs) even more now than ever. Maybe. She is really blatant with her criticism in this season and she was starting to a little bit last season because she knows that she's getting so profoundly thrown under the bus by this family and in the edits. And so she's just serving him up on a silver platter. Totally. But that's hilarious. I I love it. (laughs) I love a world where Cody can't pleasure any woman ever. I love it. I mean, he can impregnate them. 
that doesn't mean a pleasure. fact, but I don't think he can pleasure them. Doubt. I don't know. Maybe Girl. with Robin, though, maybe she'll she'll communicate a little bit in the bedroom. Maybe or she make does. demands. Yeah, exactly. She's like, I'm going to get the strap on. Get maybe on she's your a knees. Fendom. Get on that bed Dumb. and wait for me, bitch. <laughs> I'm coming with a big purple strap on because purple's my favorite color. Probably. They get ready for mama. The uh, big mama. <laughs> <laughs> them dumb robin yes. and them diesel jeans yes girl i could totally see break that we've dancing been into it. the bedroom <laughs> break dancing right oh into God. that bedroom with that strap Ooh, on totally oh my god i've been saying it for a long time that she probably pegs him i know if only they would do an only fans oh i would watch that every day <laughs> well, all look, day they're gonna have Sundays. they are gonna have to figure out some way of paying yeah. off that mortgage they're gonna have to jive and oh my god they're gonna have <laughs> if to twerk they made an only and... fans i would literally die yeah. i would subscribe so fast me too <laughs> let's manifest it let's <laughs> put it on the vision <laughs> board, board. only fans for cody and rob oh my god the big purple strap on we would have yes. to react to that on our patreon and i would one thousand percent love to do that <laughs> Jesus, hear my prayer. Oh, my God, please. Your mouth to God's ears. Yes. Well, thank you very much <laughs> for calling in and letting us imagine Robin's O-face yeah. <laughs> as an eye roll and a snub. I appreciate it. And I another love it. international raccoon. Oh, Spain. From Spain. España. I didn't realize we were global like this. You didn't realize well, it. Well, we had, we had a international raccoon. Yeah, but we, now we're having so many. I'm like, damn. People like us, Beatrice. I love it. It's not just because we're pretty. <laughs> I know. Well, this was really Ooh. fun. We yeah. want to remind you, if you want to call in, give us your opinions. Uh, we would love to hear it. All you have love to do it. is go to speakpipe.com slash reality TV cringe. I mean, we had a lot this week. I yeah. think people are over it. Yeah. With Cody Brown. <laughs> they have a lot of it. feelings. And Christine Brown. Uh, for with sure. With that open mouth kissing oh bitch. God. Please stop. But um, if you want to call us, we would love to hear from you again. We are likely to put it on the pod. Yeah. Are there any other thoughts before we get up on out of here, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. Ah! It really helps us grow the pod so we can get fatter. Thank you. Oh, my God. We will be back next week to talk Sister Wives, of course. Of course. Until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye.